Is that readable now? Um, so my name is Christopher Edo. I'm product architect at Mirantis. And I helped uh, with several other hardworking folks at Mirantis get the app catalog launched for the sake of the OpenStack Foundation, which we officially launched yesterday. And um, we had one session to kind of talk about, give, give a little bit more of an in-depth demo of it. Um, and then the idea today is to talk about it a little bit more from the community perspective and capture some of the features that uh, everyone thinks should be added to it and organize the community effort behind it. So get people actually building the blueprints and uh, expanding this with us. And my compadre today is uh, Craig Peters. I am now the strangely famous Craig Peters, just because I stood on stage and uh, it feels a little kind of awkward. But it's, it's only keynote famous, so only it'll wear off in a day or two, don't worry. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> true, so you guys have no idea, that's awesome. So the, the, the thing that I just want to say is uh, you know, we, we really did just create the seed of what a catalog can be, right? It's just, it's just a place to get started, and we really want everybody to contribute to what it can be. And the whole idea is just to have a community curated place to find stuff that makes your cloud more useful. And how we do that is up to all of us together. Um, so I'll... A uh, show of hands, who has seen the app catalog? A few people, all right. Okay, really quick, I will um, do a quick demo. Uh, just to show what it is. I'm not going to do any slides and only going to spend two or three minutes. The community app catalog is a central place where uh, anyone in the OpenStack community can add. Right now, it's set up to add uh, glance images heat templates, and Murano packages. Uh, it's added uh, by the normal community uh, review process. So these are just, it's YAML files behind the scenes. And um, you can see like the Murano packages have descriptions. You can click on any one of them and get lots more uh, information about it. Uh, same goes with the heat templates um, and glance images. And so adding things, if you're an OpenStack committer, adding things to these is really pretty easy. If you've never committed any code to OpenStack uh, and you are unfamiliar with editing a YAML file, maybe it's not as easy as we would like it to be. Uh, but we definitely took this route because this is supposed to be a community-driven thing, so keeping it really consistent with the way things work in OpenStack was kind of priority one here. Um, and I can probably if anyone wants to see it. Um, so like here is, this is what the YAML looks like for, um, so you can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is for a glance image for Debian testing. You get the name, who provided it, and the description. Um, and once this gets reviewed and committed into the catalog, then uh, a short time later, it shows up in the catalog. Ed, feel free to add anything. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, it's, uh, I could use some things, some more things. Uh, so what we'd like to do today is um, start off by just talking about different features that you people think we should add. Well, yeah. How, kind of right, so how do we avoid uh, getting yeah. the catalog cluttered with lots of duplicate information and uh, all junked up with lots of random things that are abandoned? That's a great question. I don't know. Let's, uh, could someone add that to the, for, so, I mean, so right now the, the general idea is uh, as it grows, um, because it's community driven, there is everything before it gets in there has to be reviewed by, you know, by people and, and then plus two by a, a core reviewer. So there's an assumption, at least at the beginning, before it gets all junked up, that uh, it'll be obvious, oh, we already have, you know, from Canonical Ubuntu 14, what do we need the second one? And you can respond back through comments. Long term, probably need something better, and I think we, uh, 
some of the things we, we had heard yesterday, we were talking about um, the ability to tag and review things. So something that would have to live outside of Garrett um, because it needs something that's much, has much less friction and much easier for someone to just say, oh, five stars, I love this image. Uh, or one star or add a simple comment that says, hey, I installed this image and now all of a sudden all my bandwidth is gone and uh, my ISP says I'm running a botnet. So that would be good to be able to put that feedback out there. Um, Yeah, well, so, so minimal. You, yeah, why don't you go ahead and ask again. And should, should the images be like tested beforehand of some kind of, you know, I don't know, review process or whatever that it needs to pass, checking that some of these things don't happen, that all the resources aren't being eaten up all of a sudden? Or right. So that's a good question. I have a response here. Oh, yeah. Please. Well, there's nothing to guarantee you that some bad actor won't wait seven minutes rather than six minutes to do something bad. And it's very hard to so, Yoya has one, his hand up. I think he has we, a response. We had oh, attention wow. first to get back Yeah, here. please, go ahead. So one more question, actually. So how, is there any way to actually categorize these catalogs, actually, instead of having, you know, like, because there could be a different operating systems or different type of, you know, like, catalog, right? So do you have any idea of, you know, like, grouping this catalog so that anybody Anybody logging into the website, they can see, okay, here are the grouping of things, so, so that they don't, they can easily see sure. the picture of it. That's it, a, it, may, it may not help you with the, the clutter if you have to put some kind of category in the JAML that are predefined. But yeah, well, and what we, what we actually, some kind of funnel. someone recommended yesterday, was it you, the tags? Um, so yeah, so we talked about tagging and, and using that as a, as a way to categorize it. And by the way, I, I, if, in case it wasn't clear, this is not a Mirantis, like we obviously, this is purely community, so. Um, when, when will we have election? When will we have election? That's a good, uh, good question. Um, well, we, we'll come back to that in a minute. And we'll come back to the tags because Ilya wanted to say something about uh, images and seeing whether or not they were safe. Uh, all right. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna start to jump a bit on the topic. Yeah, yeah. Let's, I want to. I want to. Let's, let's, let's try. I mean, let's try to, you know, like at least try to cover the topics like one by one and capture some outcomes in the other parts because it's, I, I guess, supposed to have an element of the design right. session and what's going on here. And I just wanted to comment on the uh, original question about validating images or different type of the artifacts. This is very valid question, and I guess there are several levels to this and. I mean, the first thing is like, I, I would propose to try simple things first. And one of the simple things, just a suggestion that we could possibly do, is to introduce a concept of trusted publishers. So, I mean, mm -hmm. validating each and every bit of information would be a, a lot of uh, clutter and a lot of work. But if we have a concept of like kind of validated publishers that kind of we generally trust as a community of this catalog, and it could be some kind of open process of how the certification goes, that might help to kind of, yeah, you establish yourself as a kind of trusted publisher, and, uh, and then you can publish kind of the information, maybe it's just differentiated somehow, this is information is going from the trusted source. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Right. Yeah, so the question is, wouldn't that be externally controlled? Uh, like, how, who do you determine who is a trusted publisher? Um, and so before we get completely bogged down in the details here, I think, uh, and I will, and, yeah? Um, Docker has the same problems with the Docker Hub, so maybe yes. looking at what they've done might help. Yeah. So, so we actually did exactly that. And uh, it's a different thing because they're a commercial entity, and what they've done is they have, uh, they have a dedicated product manager whose job is to build relationships with the publishers, and they sign legal agreements with the publishers. So one option would be that the foundation dedicates somebody to do to accomplish that. So that's a that's a valid proposal, but it, would, it it's a little bit different than the normal way OpenStack works. Right. So your question that I'm going uh, to. Oh, 
Sorry. Oh, no, but he did have his hand up before Alexander, I think. And then, and then I'll go back to you. So they've gone through a little bit more, you know, a little, a little, more, bit, little bit more validation. Yeah. And it was so, a very good way to sort of begin to look at, well, okay, this is not there and it's not been maintained for a while. Right. And yeah. So, so it just helped a little bit. That's, that's good. And, and uh, like we were saying earlier, that it would have to be someone probably from the foundation. It would probably even become their full time job. But yes. Uh, so I just wanted to just put it a little bit different way. Uh, if we compare it with uh, common package repositories like PyP or, I don't know, Node packages and anything similar, mm -hmm. uh, they are not pre-moderated. So anybody who's registered with the system right. can push any package without any review process. But that's just a package without any trust from foundation or anybody else. Right. So I would believe that being able to publish something should not be pre-moderated process. I agree. And in Glance, we have a blueprints and we have initiative for signing images with public keys. The same idea we had in Murano for signing images with public keys of the developers. And the same may go for any other kind of artifacts. As a, as a leader of artifacts, I had this in my roadmap. So I believe that anybody should be able to submit their application of packages to the catalog with a signature which binds particular package with particular publisher. And it's up to foundation or whoever drives the catalog as a, well, as a governance to pick up recommended, trusted, validated publishers. And I don't know, like in App Store, you have like featured apps tab or sure. community selected tab. And everything else can be just added in five seconds and it's up to consumers to trust this publisher or not. OK. So what I want to do, actually, is put a pause on everything. Uh, what, what we should do, I think, is just ideas, not discuss the ideas. We'll get them up on the etherpad until maybe in five minutes. Probably will be enough for everyone to have a chance to say, it should do this, and not debate how it should do it. Let's get it up on the etherpad. And then we can go through for the remaining time um, and, and talk about it. And ultimately, what we'll have to do is continue the conversation in the hallway and on the OpenStack dev mailing list. Um, sound reasonable? OK. Um. Uh, um, from my perspective as a service provider, I think a lot of this discussion so far kind of makes a giant assumption that the image booted, booted successfully. Uh, there's so many other options that we need to think about um, for the format of the image. You know, what clouds can you actually run these images on? Right. So more details about, about the image, um, and like where it can run, how it was built, so on. Right. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. So, so, so we got license, license. license agreements and license concerns, which falls into the more image details category. Uh, I, yeah. Um, I had to ask one of the, by mail one of the app catalog guys um, what features the VM had. Um, it looked like it, it was something that maintained state, but it was like, well, if I run one of these things and I delete it and I launch it again, does my data stay around or is it transient? Or you know? mm -hmm. So some, some kind of metadata for if it's intended for just one-off little things or if it's designed to be permanently around, right. or, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And then kind of tying into a previous comment, um, what things of the underlying cloud are required in order to make it work? Do, do, do you okay. need Elbaz on your cloud? Yeah, you what need, are, exactly. You know, what are the you dependencies? Need Swift? Um, OK, so we get that. Um, I, think, I think you need some kind of data, tra uh, data tracking usage on the specific images. And you know, after a while, those stats will speak for themselves. So right, you've like, successfully deployed it, and people can then both like, come back to that image. Sure. OK, it's successfully deployed. And you have that data available, so whoever's in charge of, uh, uh, I forget the term, but whoever's in charge of keeping track of these things can remove useless ones over time as these stats uh, accumulate. Yeah, exactly. So the, the, whoever's curating it, garbage probably going to be, yeah, the garbage collection. So I would say all of that all falls under um, kind of that same category of 
uh, extra information around images, so the ability to tag them, the ability to rate them, and even a, uh, a discussion thread underneath the images, so people have a place where they can, where they can exactly say that, oh, I launched this image, it says you need Elbas, and it didn't work for me. Or I ran it, I tried to run on, on an ESXi hypervisor, and it didn't work, and someone else can say it works great on KVM. Um, so, uh, yeah. Excellent, thank you. Okay. Yeah, we had similar discussions in the product managers sessions over the last week, mm -hmm. and they're like at the same place, trying to trying to get their feet wet here. But I think that it would behoove us to have a lease with that with that team, okay. because they're trying to solve some of the same problems. They're trying to put governance and infrastructure around all of this wonderfulness, and the fact that there's so many products out there. Compatibility is a huge issue, yeah. and right. I think the concept of tagging fits exactly in what the product managers are doing. Yeah, and it, that's, I think, yeah, so okay, tagging so and collaborate with the project manager. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to the product manager's working session, so if, just really quickly, is it tagging of individual components in OpenStack, or is, and, and there's some measure of compatibility uh, with a tag? It's, it's, all it's, it's all of it as far as I understand. To right. prepare for the compatibility matrix because we're going to have multiple versions of everything running right. in every environment. You've got to be sure. So this has to feed into that, whether it's part of a releasable product or if it's just some piece of code sitting out there that everybody's going to snag. It's got to work similarly or we're doomed. Or okay. we have chaos, yes. Yeah. Or no. Yeah, a couple of things uh, about the images and in Clan's perspective. First of all, we have pretty much most of our public cloud providers already permitting normal users uploading images mm -hmm. to, to avoid malicious images going in. And if the marketplace doesn't validate what's going on there, if we can't trust the images there, none of the cloud providers will, will accept any level of automation pulling actually those images in either. So okay. that's one big thing. Uh, Second thing so. what I noticed is that uh, the metadata what there is on the YAML on the images mm -hmm. doesn't actually provide uh, most of the needed details to actually create an image in plans out of, out of those. So even you get the blob of data, you see that it's QCOW2, but you have no other uh, properties of the image what you right. need to actually create the image. So I would really like to see at least the mandatory properties added on, yeah. on the details. Yeah, so, so right now extra stuff can be added under uh, attr additional attributes, but it's not checked against the YAML, so it would make sense. So yeah, it would definitely capture that. And, exp and if you can, um, on the mailing list or whatever, give some feedback on exactly, or even update the, uh, the schema, and, and for the additional required things for Glance, that would be super helpful. Yeah. So, so our... Yes. Are those clouds also restricting Docker containers? Because it's the same thing. You know, you can get a compromised Docker container just as easily as you get a compromised Glance image. So I'll participate for a second. The uh, the you know the thing about Docker is that Docker Hub is not the only source, right? right. So the containers can come from some alternate source. So I suspect right. that most of the service providers are using an alternate source, and so we could have a similar model. Where and in fact we do uh, in some of the sub projects. So in Murano, I know you can specify the source URL for the repo, and it's up to the service provider to point to that. And you, so you can create a moderated clone of the repo inside your firewall. So the service provider has complete control over what the source is. So that does, sort does of the that Docker works to some extent, but it's not going to capture right. the, the binary. Does, but yeah, does Docker container references then belong in? this catalog and govern the same exact way as all the rest? That's Maybe. a very good question. Good question. Um, I think we, we kind of, I'm not trying to remember if we captured it already, but the, just the idea that we, w there is definitely a need for more categories, because um, there's clearly uh, a desire to put more assets in the, the app catalog than, than only Murano, Glance, or Heat. Um, so we, I think, we haven't captured it, Serge. Make sure we get down, uh, you know, talking about how to add more stuff and how and how this should grow. Um, but so let's keep going on other ideas and before we get into the weeds on discussion again. Yeah, I have a couple <coughs> of things. Like, are we thinking about having some kind of versioning for the artifacts? Like, That's I'm really yes. 
worried about the drift of the catalog, like generating multiple instances that is just the same right. thing with a small delta. Uh, the other thing will be uh, about images. I mean, are we really thinking about having rich images on the catalog? Like, it's not only the operating system, like, it's going to require a BAS, I put an application inside. Will it, it be a kind of best practices to have just an operating system and then hit templates or whatever else, Murano things, like, just yeah. to... So we should certainly capture this question. I know as I'm walking with the microphone, I'm going to put my two cents in there. I, I think one of the things that we could add to the catalog as kind of metadata on top of it is a set of best practices for certain use cases. I'd love to see a way to capture all of these bits and pieces pulled together as solutions for a specific use case and have those also be rated. But that's, that's a, another idea that we should probably capture. Uh, just one another idea. Uh, in my perfect unicorn world, I will see uh, this thing. Also known as an OpenStack environment. Exactly. It's, it's OpenStack U release. U stands for unicorns. Uh, so I would see uh, the catalog as a federation of catalogs. So apps.openstack.org, which is like a top level community application catalog, That's a good idea. is like a so top we'll level thing, but f on every enterprise user or an, any grouping of clouds, you may have, uh, they may have their particular catalogs, and the particular cloud may have like a little catalog of artifacts, mm -hmm. which is artifact repository, and so I would see this to be like a federation of so, yeah, assets. Federated assets. Yeah, federated, so it's uh, not today, not tomorrow, yeah. but at some point, I believe we should right. go that way. Yeah, in, in, that va in that vein, can the applications catalog, the global one, be run locally in an enterprise so that all the enterprises' clouds can share one? The, 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 the answer is true absolutely today with the current impl naive implementation because you can just get clone right. the current implementation uh, and in change the URL. In that same vein, too, uh, some kind of REST API might be nice so that you could integrate Horizon so yes. it can just search through it. Yeah, yeah, so that's so another a REST, <clears throat> REST API, and and I I had put in one of the one of the seed ideas earlier was it would um, I think I put that in here anyway. Uh, I was thinking like it'd so be really great if Glance uh, further up it says search functionality. Yes, in there we go. Glance client, heat client, and somewhere in Horizon. Yeah. Yeah, because um, like basically going kind of aping Docker again, it would be great if you could just type you know Glance search Ubuntu fourteen and get hey, look, there's this many images and uh, and glance pull and have it, you know, have it fetch the requirements from the catalog so that it can, you know, properly drag it in. Hey, what about um, glance push? Yeah, that's that. I, for me, that falls under the category of making it easier to add. Um, I'll but yeah. provide you some glance push back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so other, uh, other ideas or thoughts that we should capture before we uh, get into the weeds on discussions and arguing? Because I know that's what you we want to argue? do at the summit. That's all I'm going to do. That's why I, I'm This doesn't here. seem like that kind of crowd. Oh, sorry. Did, what, what's, yeah, yeah, so, so just how far in the weeds are we going there? Um, I've been trying to dig up support for solving some of the problems with making really generic heat templates you know, putting keys in Barbican and being able to get the VMs to talk to them. Um, trying to get Nova and Keystone and Barbican and Zachar guys all in a to talk about it all at once, and it's proving difficult. Yeah, I, I actually I mean, think this forum, this effort, could be a great way to kind of force that issue. Personally. Yeah, that's what that was kind of because I, my I really want to make templates that I can put in the catalog that have no credentials at all, mm -hmm. and a user can launch and point out, you know, the credentials for their track site that they're trying to launch, and it comes up with their SSL certs, and everything just kind of works. That's that would be great. Um, Did can we capture that search? Did you get that, or do you not understand? Get it? Summarize. Okay. Summarize. So, so the idea is that we have a way to give a best practice for componentization of each of these things in a way that you can fit them together so that you don't hard code environment dependent attributes. 
Is that reasonable? Yeah, sort of. And sort of. Yeah, and, and credentials in particular, uh, they're really hard to not put in a template today. That's absolutely true. So they, they, by, not, by requiring it to be in the template, it makes it hard to not, to, to contribute those templates back to a generic pool of resources, like the app catalog, because you can't write them generically. So the question also remains, so this is an interesting cross project issue, because it, it could be that this is actually a requirement on each of these projects, that they have a common, well, it would be nice if it was common, but a way to externalize some of those, com those uh, parameters so that you can manage them in a cloud or tenant uh, specific way after, uh, after consumption from some catalog. Yeah. Do you get that, Serge? Okay. Uh, would it make sense to add other types of artifacts, for example, Tosca yes. files or Mistral workflows? It would make sense to add other stuff, and I, I think we, I mean, I don't know if we captured it anywhere. My, what so I'm, I, I know I've heard from the Trove guys, too. Yes, and, and what, what I'm thinking, and not, not to get into the discussion, but we basically we need to be able to, to expand this and capture lots of other types of uh, resources in the app catalog. Um, but it also goes back to how do you find this stuff, how do you weed through it, which ties into tags, categorizations, and stuff like that. And usability. Um, and, and usability, exactly. So, but let's capture just the ability to add more different types of assets. And yes, you had something. Yeah, I mean, we talked about Tosca yesterday, so absolutely. Right. Um, if you recall, about a year ago, HP had a project called Graffiti. Mm -hmm. And and the concept was, and it relates to Tosca as well, which is people want to, to find specific types that are used in service templates to bring in their own definitions. And they were using tagging to identify those types so that at, at uh, runtime, deployment time, a template could be read <clears throat> and look up types from a tag. OK. Um, that, that sounds like a good suggestion. Yeah. Uh, HP's graffiti is now an experimental API in Glance. So like most of the stuff that we're talking about can be done in Glance partially right now. Like the, the artifact database layer is already in Glance and the API layer should probably land this cycle. Um, we're actually going to discuss it's this afternoon, right? Whether or not artifact should be its own project or not. And same thing for catalog and text search, okay. which is graffiti. So. And can you, wait, can you pass the mic? Yeah. So, so I, I was going to ask a follow-on question to that. Is does that mean that you're suggesting that uh, the that Glance be the backing store potentially for the public repo? It, it seems like a good fit, and like that's why I'll. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I said something. No, because we're Yeah. I, well, but again, I want to get into the. Let's not discuss that yet. Um, let's stick on uh, other ideas before we start discussing the backing store. Did you, uh, or did you want to discuss the backing store? <laughs> no, some, something else. Um, the the t go back to tagging a little bit. Uh, it was, oh, the the types. Um, I can see maybe two different types of types. Ones that, ones that a user wants to just go to the app store and launch something, and right. they don't require much foreknowledge. Uh, you know, we, we're deploying a cloud for research scientists, you know, mm -hmm. which are non-computer scientists. And the App Store is very interesting from that standpoint, where they can just go pick, I, I want a track site or I want a website or something, and hit launch, and it happens. Yeah. Uh, some of the stuff like a uh, um, glance artifacts or, or you know those sorts of things are building blocks that mm -hmm. CS folks might want to easily be able to get access to. Yeah. But it's something that the other category of users might not want to see at all. Right. And so some so kind of some way of classifying or them. Classes and stuff. So, um, so, so even even further. Sorry. <laughs> so, so, it's, so, 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 Serge, I think tags are yeah, an implementation that. that would allow that. But I think one of the things that you're suggesting is that they there would website, there would actually be a tiered user interface, sort of the. The, the kind of starters user interface. Yeah. Here's your here's here's your quick start, and then if you want to get into the weeds and, and get the detailed components, here's how you get there. Like the advanced user, yeah, it's, it's, I think it, that not not. Yeah. 
Not necessarily uh, the right structure. I would even say should... that if we have APIs for search and filtering, we may have multiple uh, dashboards uh, which display multiple types of objects. So if you, and you may customize the dashboard for particular users. That makes perfect sense. Uh, so uh, when does this session end? Now? Yeah, In five minutes? <laughs> Six minutes, okay. So we're just, okay. Ah, 10 minutes I'm hearing. 10. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. So before this uh, session ends, I would like to clearly uh, bring up topic about community forming uh, yeah. community around Cadillac, uh, especially selecting PTL and after that selecting few people as cores mm -hmm. to push this initiative further. And I should, I think that this is first question that we think, uh, should solve after the session. I mean after the summit. Yeah. And then return to all these topics through the mailing list through the, our. RC that we will establish, obviously, and we go already have it. Oh. <laughs> My bad, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> and going through them. What's that? Sorry. Tag and mailing uh, list. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, the one I sent out this morning was uh, I think I just called it apps dash catalog, um, and I, I agree. So we do need to kind of decide how we'll do that. Uh, build the community right now. Um, is there does anybody have a proposal about time frame for elections or you know, how that works? So I've seen a lot of discussions in other young projects where they decided to select the PTL just the first day when the project started. Yeah. But the suggestion was just work together mm -hmm. as a group, don't select anyone as a PTL, and then mm -hmm. after some time you'll just figure out who's, who can who's coordinating do this work. The most yeah. and, and kind of yeah. being the linchpin. So, well, so right. So, so we do right at least now, need to have yeah. a discussion about who the core committers are. Um, on the community building side, I, I, I would propose to start actually with actually building the community and seeing the community of people who is interested in initiative form around this initiative, and then kind of naturally, you know, like there will be more, more, more and more cores. Like for now, there is kind of few guys who are like originally involved. And it's like a kind of a good start, and then, and then I mean, just enforcing right now like all of these elections, and uh, you know, like electing the course. There's no data. I mean, all of these decisions is typically data driven in the community, mm -hmm. and right now there is no data because there right. was no activity. It just right. started. Right. So, so I guess the question, right? The, I guess <laughs> the next question then is, you know, do we have somewhere published the list of the people who are core committers right now? Have, well, we, I mean, have we made that public? That. Yeah, so, right. so it's, and then that's do, obvious. Do we have anybody like, who, who wants to be a member of that small club? I, I'm, so I'm one of the core reviewers right now. I'm, I, what I would say, what my, I will volunteer to coordinate and organize right now um, and keep bringing people in, and we'll just see how it goes from there. So uh, you know, certainly if, if there are other people who feel passionate that they uh, you know, want to add a lot back and, and help do this. I'm not going to fight for it, but uh, you know, for the short term, uh, I, I think that makes sense to just, we'll keep doing what we're doing. Certainly if uh, someone is getting really serious about reviewing and adding things back, um, we have the discussion on the mailing list about adding them to the core reviewers. That's, it's all totally transparent. So right now, um, I know Serge, myself, Tom Fifield from the OpenStack Foundation, and who else is a reviewer core? Uh, someone from Heat. Is it okay? It's, it's and not and also, I wanted to point out that we do need the developers to develop the actual front end because, like, front end is like a first version. It's not feature. It's all of the features that you guys talking about is kind of they're non-existent. They need to be implemented in JavaScript. Maybe right now, just a simple JavaScript on top of some YAML files from the Git repo. Maybe we need to kind of build right some kind of. A proper website with some proper functionality around it, and that's and for me, like that, that falls into kind of that category of the longer term planning. What's what's the real back end for this going to be? Because the long term back end can't be the YAML files with JavaScript in front of it, because uh, it won't scale, um, and it doesn't really allow for, I would say, ninety percent of the functionality that we're we're talking about right now. So um, something else to for us to discuss. Yeah, and, and from, from Mirante's side, we obviously will help to carry out this initiative forward, but it would be really great to see 
other people jumping in and making it like yeah. really community efforts. Right, because I mean, one of the biggest things that, that this, uh, the reason that the foundation wanted this to happen was so that there would be a vendor neutral common ground. Um, and so like if you look at the platform as a service stuff, most of those PaaS players would actually really like to very carefully you know, build big walls around their garden. All of them want to do that. Um, and I think it, and we all see that that's not really good for OpenStack. It's not good for the community. It's not good for adoption. Actually getting people to, to all come in here and, and start, stop worrying about their own private catalogs and just work together in one common community place is fantastic for OpenStack. And that's, like, that's probably one of the most important driving principles behind what we're trying to do here. So um, any other ideas? Ideas that we want to capture. Well, Who else? Keep or, or, or any hands want to be raised that are not. Yeah, did anyone not get called on? Because I, I do apologize. The light is right in my eye. So. <laughs> oh, John's taking a nap. I think. <laughs> oh, I, I woke him up. He, he, he at least made a face at me. <laughs> but I, I guess I was wondering if there's anybody who wants to raise their hand who's not a Marantis employee to come and be a core <laughs> participant. I don't see any anybody jumping forward. Oh, you do? Right there? Maybe. Hey. <laughs> so. Yay. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so can you put your name in there or something so we can, in your contact info so we can reach out? And the thing I, so um, as much as possible, let's take stuff to the mailing list too so we uh, capture the people who weren't lucky enough to come to uh, Canada, um, and yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll write up a, kind of a, try to write up a summary of what we talked about and uh, identify just, some of the We can the next just do steps. that in the Etherpad, and then we'll, uh, uh, the summary, and yeah. the, we can probably do it in the Etherpad, and then we can add the link to the video uh, sure. for anybody. To yeah, that is, so, yeah, exactly. Um, I can scroll back up, and since it will be on the video, I'll make it right there at the top. And it's on the OpenStack dev and OpenStack operators mailing list. I sent uh, an invitation today. So if you check either of those lists, uh, they, there's links to this and links to the slides that Craig and I showed yesterday, uh, kind of talking about the genesis and, and what the app catalog is and so on. Um, any, anything else? Any hands? Because how, how much time left? That's it. We're done. Perfect Music's timing. Coming up. Thanks, everybody, so much for coming. I really, really appreciate that we got some people here. Thank you.